people of the internet, my name is Johnny. Welcome back to yet another FNAF news video. If you missed yesterday's upload, we talked about a whole bunch of brand new info regarding the FNAF movie. Filming finally wrapped up. We got some crazy new cast and crew announcements, as well as a few extra details provided by a few YouTubers who actually went to go see the set itself. It was a very exciting video, but today we're going back to our roots and focusing on practically everything but the FNAF movie. So if you're looking forward to all the other FNAF news, don't forget to scroll down and hit that sub button if you're brand new and now let's hop right into the news first up let's start off with some merchandise finally after months of waiting the previously revealed chocolate bonnie popsy from funko has been released just in time for easter 2 as you can see i finally changed over my calendar we got easter bonnie there of course for the month of april but yeah if you're a fan of the popsies chocolate bonnie is now up on the funko website he pops up saying surprise happy easter moving on now to youtube's we got quite a bit of news regarding them first off they showed off their brand new upcoming fnaf one keycaps. Some people are so confused about what the heck this means. Basically, on your keyboard, you can take off the actual keys and replace them with these FNAF inspired keycaps. I've seen a lot of people criticize this because they think it's pretty impractical, which if I'm honest, it is. It's a giant clunky FNAF character on your keyboard. Personally though, I still think they look adorable. I'll probably get one just to have on some keys that I don't use often, purely just for aesthetic reasons, you know? In the video, they showed off keycaps for Foxy and Bonnie, and last year they also showed off a Roxanne keycap, so most likely we'll be getting two waves, one with the FNAF 1 characters and another one with Security Breach. Secondly, for you twos, earlier today they showed off their upcoming Sit or Shoulder Rider Chica plushie on TikTok. I say Sit or Shoulder Rider because I'm not entirely sure which one it's going to be. Because we don't see a base for the plushie, I'm leaning more towards this just being a regular sitting Chica plushie, but I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. There's no other release date or info regarding this besides these two pictures. And lastly, a couple days ago, once again over on their TikTok in the background, you can see a box for their upcoming Dreadbear figure. Dreadbear is going to be a part of the Help Wanted wave with Grim Foxy and Glitch Trap and also Shadow Mangle, who we got a teaser for, I believe, sometime last year as well. All we have for release date for this wave is that it's coming out some point later this year, so not too much of a release date, but it still gives you a bit of an idea of when they're going to release. So tell me what are your thoughts on all the brand new U2's news, from the Dreadbear figure to the Chica plushie to the keycaps. I'd love to know what are your thoughts. Moving on now to a bit of fanverse news. We got Kane Carter releasing a surprise brand new Pop Goes teaser game titled My Pop Goes. I actually just earlier today finished recording my playthrough of the game that'll be up hopefully tomorrow. It's a really cute, short, simple game, but of course, it's got a few dark secrets we gotta take a look at. Mainly, this bad boy. This is a brand new teaser you can find for False Balloon Boy in My Pop Goes. You're gonna see it in tomorrow's video, but you have a slight chance every now and then of interacting with the toy option in the extras menu, and you get a small chance of this guy popping up on your screen. He's absolutely terrifying. I'd love to know what are your thoughts on this design for False Balloon Boy. I'm excited to see him in action in Pop Goes Evergreen. I'll most likely take a closer look at this character once we get around to that Pop Goes Weekly Update news video, which surely is coming out any day now. I'm so sorry for making you wait. And lastly, for Pop Goes news, Kane announced yesterday that he sent an email to Scott to get my Pop Goes into the fanverse. During a Q&A, he talked a bit more about what this possible fanverse entry would look like, saying, if enough people enjoy the game and we have enough ideas to expand on the premise without wasting too much time for Evergreen, then I may organize a very cheap Steam release with a few more features. Also later on stating, but if an expanded Steam release is sorted, then I'd probably push for a mobile release because I I think it'd be perfect there. I don't think it's a good fit for consoles though. So best of luck to Kane and the rest of the My Pop Goes team. I'd absolutely love to see an expansion of the game. I'd also love to get it on my phone because like Kane said, it's the perfect game for your phone. And actually as I was editing this video, Kane made a tweet saying he loves it. It's happening. A new fanverse game. Thanks for the support everyone and keep sharing your feedback and ideas. So absolutely incredible news. My Pop Goes is now officially part of the Fazbear fanverse initiative. Huge congrats to Kane and the rest of the My Pop Goes team on the absolute W. Can't wait to see what new additions the game gets now that it's under the Fazbear fanverse. Moving on now to some book news. We got the description for the fourth entry in the Fazbear Frights graphic novel series. And based off the description, we can expect to see the stories The Breaking Wheel, The Cliffs, and Sergio's Lucky Day to be adapted into illustrations. And if you've read those stories or you've heard summaries based on these stories, you know they can get pretty graphic, especially that Breaking Wheel story. Oh my god. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they adapt those gory parts of these stories into pictures. Hopefully 
they don't tame it down too much. Fazbear Frights graphic novel number four releases on December 26th, in fact the same release date for yet another new book announced, and that is the Security Breach Files Updated Edition, and this one is pretty interesting, because the description states now updated with more content and a walkthrough all the new Ruin DLC missions. This has led a lot of people to assume that because this book is releasing late December, the Ruin DLC obviously has to come out before then, which I'd like to remind you isn't necessarily true. There were plenty of merchandise and books that referenced Security Breach that released way before the game came out, so I wouldn't necessarily say it's set in stone it's releasing before December 26th. Though because Steel Wool has released that teaser saying 2023 free DLC, I'd hope it releases before that date, but of course, let's not confirm release dates for a game based off books. It hasn't gone well in the past. The Security Breach Files was one of those books that the community was very disappointed with. Seems like it was rushed, a lot of misinformation, just straight up wrong info in the book, so hopefully this updated edition will satisfy those fans, and hopefully we'll take a very deep dive into the Ruin DLC. I'm very excited to see what it has in store. And lastly, for Security Breach, we got a very interesting interesting announcement the other day. Because a new listing for, quote, an untitled FNAF Security Breach project appeared on IMDb Pro. When this page first launched, it had uh, Jason Toplowski from Steel Wool Studios, good old J-Top, as the director for the project. It had Kellen, Marta, Heather, and Cameron reprising their roles voicing the Glamrock animatronics. And it also said this was an animated TV series with a runtime of about 20 minutes. Now you may have seen a lot of conflicting information about this project. People saying it's real, people saying it was just an April Fool's joke and someone just made it up. But you also had a lot of people pointing out, hey, this was on IMDb Pro. They only post reliable information. This is all legit. And then you check the page later and you see that Matt Pat and Bob have been added to the cast and you get a bit skeptical, you know? So I'm just gonna be straight up, we still do not know whether or not this is legit or not. It's very, very possible that this page was created by Steel Wool with the impression of updating it later on once a animation project was revealed. Most likely for another animated cartoon that's gonna show up in the coming days for the brand new uh, Security Breach TV teasers, you know? So Steel Wool sets up the page, but the thing with IMDB Pro is that the creators have to claim the page. The studio behind the projects need to claim the page and then it locks it from the public. So it's possible Steerwool didn't claim the page and because of that, it was open to public editing. I highly, highly doubt if this is legit, it'll be an actual animated TV series that'll be showing up on like live programming. That'd be insane. Also keep in mind Freddy and Friends on tour, the original advertising campaign for Security Breach, has an IMDB page owned by Steel Wool. So again, if this is just another SBTV series, most likely they just set this up in advance. If there's anything to take away from this, definitely don't take edits made after the page's launch as fact. Those were most likely made by the public and probably shouldn't be trusted. But if there are any other updates on this project, I'll be sure to let you guys know. And now that leads us into our final topic for today. And editing Johnny Blocks is hopping in here one last time because we just got some crazy news for the FNAF film. Because Adam Han Bird will be providing the voice and motion capture for Free. Freddy Fazbear himself. And it has also been revealed that Stacy DePass will be providing the voice and motion capture for Chica. Some very, very exciting news. I'm very curious to see what they're going to sound like. It also does confirm that we will be seeing them actually walking around since they're doing voices and motion capture. I do wonder in what context they are going to speak in. We do know apparently according to, again, the YouTubers that were flown out to the FNAF set in New Orleans, apparently Freddy sings at one point. We also know that they're going to be all up on stage at one point. So maybe we'll see a musical number or maybe they'll just be ominously taunting Mike as he's doing his job working as the night guard. I don't know. It's going to be very interesting. I'd love to know what your thoughts and theories in the comments down below. A possible FNAF movie topic that literally happened two minutes after I uploaded my video yesterday. The timing could not have been more perfect. Or ironic, because I couldn't include it in the FNAF News video yesterday, but we got this tweet from Jason saying tomorrow. Now, Jason has been hyping up some big announcement on his Twitter for about a week and a half now. A lot of people are assuming it could be FNAF movie news, though, of course, that's not confirmed. Because this was posted yesterday, theoretically, if he's telling the truth, we should get some 
Blumhouse big announcement news today. If it is FNAF movie news, I'll be sure to let you guys know and most likely get a second video out today, so you're welcome if it happens. As I stated in yesterday's video, Raz did mention in his vlog about going to the FNAF movie set that Blumhouse is planning some big reveal with the animatronics some point in the future, so could it actually be happening today? Or even just a poster. It doesn't even have to be a full reveal of all the characters, you know? It could just be a simple poster or maybe a release window, like winter 2023 or something like that. I don't know. I'm spitballing here. But like I said, if this is anything related to FNAF, I'll be sure to let you guys know as soon as I can. But that's going to do it for this news video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.